Hey guys, Jordan Wade here on Camby Street, just steps from Vancouver City Hall, where today we're going to be chatting with Jeff Meggs, City Councilor for Vancouver, to get his take on the transit referendum. We're here with Vancouver City Councilor Jeff Meggs to talk about the transit referendum. And Jeff, for those not in the know, what exactly is it? Well, it's a vote right across Metro, uh, all uh, voters, citizens, about whether or not we should invest uh, over the next 10 years in a $7.5 billion improvement to our transit system. And the reason we're voting is because uh, there's a proposal to add 0.5% to the sales tax to pay for this investment. So on the one hand, you've got all the buses, new trains, uh, better sea bus, West Coast Express, all of those benefits. On the other hand, sales tax will go up 0.5% in Metro question is, do you want that or do you not want that? Okay, so you mentioned the vote. Uh, logistically, how can people actually get their voice heard? Well, strangely enough, they have to stay home because it's going to come in the mail. You're going to get a mail ballot. Uh, it'll have a bit of information in it. You fill in your vote and you ship it back by mail to Elections BC. And you're going to have a period of time till uh, May to do that. What it'll mean for most voters is uh, an average of 20 minutes per day saved on their commute. I guess I would say this, if you like sitting in traffic or you don't mind being passed up by full buses, then vote no. If you'd like to get to where you want to go faster and uh, more uh, efficiently, you should vote yes. Considering Vancouver is such an uh, environmentally conscious city, you'd think that there would be almost an overwhelming majority. So why has the no side so far been gaining momentum? Well, I think uh, the no side's got a compelling argument for some people because they're frustrated with TransLink, but TransLink isn't on the ballot. Uh, what we've seen in the suburbs is reductions in service in the recent uh, years as we've tried to focus the buses, or TransLink has tried to put the buses in particular where there's a lot of ridership, and that's meant decline in service in some of the suburbs. The investment's needed to extend proper service to those folks so that at the end of the plan, 75 to 80 percent of the region with, would be within walking distance of frequent bus service. Those are the types of improvements we're looking for. I think uh, people are reluctant to say yes if they are because they're wondering if it's really going to benefit them personally. And uh, my short answer is yes, it will. Maybe not tomorrow, but very quickly. And in the absence of this, you're going to see a huge increase in congestion and traffic. That's the bottom line. We, we have a million more people coming to the region over the next number of years. And without that investment, it's very hard to say how they're going to get around. For those that maybe feel they wouldn't benefit from the, the transit infrastructure improvements, either they live in the outer outskirts or they just won't be, get a chance to use these, the new projects, what would you say to them? Well, I would say they should uh, vote yes, but keep driving if that's their situation. For example, uh, suppose you're commuting from Surrey in your car. Do you think it's going to be a good plan to really increase congestion on those Surrey roads, or would you like to see the newcomers start to move more sharply towards the transit option? Uh, everybody will always have the option to drive, take transit, or whatever. It's increasing those choices that uh, we're, we're looking to achieve. So I would say to those who are worried about the benefit is that even if they don't plan to change their patterns, they will see less congestion and quicker trips as a result of the investments because other people will be using that equipment. You said it's going to save people, the average person, 20 minutes on their commute. How much is going to cost them more per, per month or per year to save that time on their commute? Well, the tax increase for the average family would be about 34 cents a day. I put that in a scale against, uh, uh, say, a 20 minute saving. Even if I'm making minimum wage, that's like about uh, $3 in savings in terms of time that I get to use as, as I see fit. Um, so that the actual incremental cost is very, very modest. And it's going to be supervised by an audit committee to make sure it goes to the right places. So the direct cost to the average uh, taxpayer is very, very low, but the payback across the region is very high, and for the individual family can be very high. Uh, you know, again, I go to the case of, say, someone who, for housing reasons, they just can't afford to live downtown. They may be coming to work in the hospitality industry, film, or whatever it is, and they're living in Richmond, Surrey, uh, even Delta. If they're coming by bus, their commutes are already brutally long. If they can reduce that, that's an enormous saving. Okay, we're here with Laz and Alan, who are in Vancouver from the Okanagan. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on the transit referendum here in Vancouver? Uh, it sounds like a good idea. It's not a whole lot to pay for a tax, and the transit system isn't that great as it is. So it would be good to put something into putting it better. What are your thoughts? 
I think just 0.5% more is not that much, and we could do it very easily. Well, I just wish it was more a question on transit rather than a question on uh, whether TransLink is a good operation or not. Yeah, there has been a bit of an onslaught on TransLink. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, it's hard to say. They're a public company, so people know, you know, sort of the bad things about it. I'm going to vote yes just because, you know, I think, you know, the, we need more transit. So. Um, and eventually over time, they'll, they'll fix the inefficiency of the TransLink. Mind my asking why you're voting no? Oh, well, they just put all their, uh, all their options in one basket. Um, there's other ways to fund it, and I don't think this is, they only give us one choice, and it's a yes or no. It's not like, here are other options. So they shot themselves in the foot in that way. Um, also, yeah, I just don't like the way they're funding it. Would you have a, a suggestion or an idea for another way to go about funding it? You can close City Hall, yeah. all the ones that we don't use, and take the money we spend running that one and spend it on the transit. That's just an example. There are other ways we can go about getting the money. There's just not increasing a sales tax that people will forget down the line and people will just consider standard and they won't remove it. If they really wanted to get on our good side, they'd um, give us an end date for the, the increase of the tax. We've taken to transit here in Vancouver to find out how locals feel about the transit referendum. Will it be yay? Yay! Or nay? Nay. <laughs> we'll find out by May 29th.